Listen up, patriots, gaytriots, and matriots. We have a new podcast that has dropped. It's called IHIP News. It's Monday through Friday, every day, 15 to 20 minute hot takes on the political landscape of the United States of America, always served with a side of petty grievances. We are on all the available platforms, Apple, Spotify, Google, whatever you get your podcasts and YouTube. Please go rate, subscribe, and review so that we will chart upwards with America's greatest legal mind. Pumps, pumps, what does an eagle say? Caca! <laughs> A little bit more enthusiasm. Caca! That's it. That's, that's, caca! That's the patriotism that this country needs right there. So are we supposed to start? One, two, three. <laughs> that was bad. Can you act like an eagle? <laughs> Caca! There you go. I can do that better. Welcome to I've Had It Podcast. Sometimes the star of our show. It's an off day. Has a hard time finding her hands. <laughs> well, when you're not looking. See, that there was better. There uh, We are a place for open-minded thinkers to air petty grievances. Pumps, what have you had it with? Okay, what I've had it with is all the paperwork you have to fill out when you go to the doctor. My doctor that I've gone to forever changed systems. So I went in for my pellets. Hang on. The thing that you have crammed up your ass? No, it's not crammed up your ass. They make like a little incision in your butt cheek. It's not in your crack. It's not in your rectum. But they cram it in your ass. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how they do it. I've never seen it. It is in your ass. It's in your ass. Like it's they crammed put, in there. I think they put like little pills or something underneath your skin so they cram it in the ass yeah but not your asshole just in your butt cheek all right so anyway this whole process by the time you deaden it and do all that it's about a 20 minute deal getting the stuff crammed in your ass getting the stuff crammed in your ass so they come in and they're like oh we got a new system you got to refill out all this paperwork i was done with the pellet before i was done with the fucking paperwork and i was just like who cares if i had a surgery when i was five years old like Shut the fuck up. And then I just got irate over the HIPAA release because I'm like, you have to sign a release if they can leave a message. You have to sign a release if they can text you. You have to sign a release that you know your privacy rights. You have to sign a release that your emergency contact can be contacted. Yet they want to know everything about what's going on in a woman's gynecological office and it was just infuriating so when the doctor came in I chewed her out when the nurse I mean not her but I was just like how can this be I wasn't mad at her but I was just like how can this be that there's 14 releases about who you can release my information to and the government fucking wants my information because I'm female it makes me furious I mean it totally turned the course of my whole day because I was just like, do not sit here and make us sign all these fucking forms about our privacy when you want to track girls' menstrual cycles. When you want Joe Blow, dipshit state representative, state of Oklahoma, to come in and tell me what I can do with my body. It makes me so fucking mad. Changes the entire complexion of my day. Furious. I mean, what could have been a, a rather enjoyable pellet being crammed up your ass? Next thing you know, heads are rolling. Heads are rolling. But, you know, to your point, the uh, vice presidential candidate of uh, the Republican Party, mm. he's on the record in his own voice saying that he wants it to be a felony if a woman crosses state lines to receive abortion care, that he wants women going to prison. Donald Trump himself, in his own voice, said that he wants it to be a crime and there needs to be a punishment right. for a woman receiving abortion care, which your had it kind of segues over to my, my I've had it. And I've had it with these dumbass, entitled white women on Instagram when from day one of this podcast... We have been very transparent that we care passionately about human rights and social justice. We haven't minced words. We haven't said it softly. We haven't whispered it. To the contrary, we've said, if you don't agree with us, we don't want your follow. We don't want you to subscribe. 
we don't want you to listen. Go to your mega church and fuck right on off. We've been crystal clear about this. So it makes sense that we talk about this on our podcast that our illustrious producer, Kylie, would put reels together for TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and that same message would be on our social platforms. I think suburban white women might be some of the dumbest idiots I have ever seen in my entire life. And they think they wield such a big stick because they write in the comment section, I'm never going to support you ever again. I wish you'd just stick to being funny. Unfollowed. Bye. I'm like, well, Debbie, good. Hit the fucking bricks. Go tithe to your mega church pastor that has a big PJ and a stylist and billions of dollars of net worth and gets PPP loans. And you go be morally duplicitous because one day, Debbie, your little daughter or your little granddaughter might need abortion care. And I will put my head on the pillow at night knowing that I fought for her. Or also, Debbie, one day you might have a queer grandchild who is bullied by people. And you might love that child more than anything on the planet. But don't you worry, Debbie, because a lot of us are fighting for that kid when you are too big of a pussy to fight for him. So I've had it with these women who think that we're just pining for their follow. I am relieved when I see that you leave. So listen up, entitled white women. We don't want your follow. If you want to announce that you're unfollowing, I appreciate that because you put it in the permanent record what a bigot you are, how opposed to human rights that you are, and what a Christian hypocrite that you are. Because I go and I click on the profile and it's like, uh, I love Jesus, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I'm glad that you're making physical documentation to the exact type of hypocrite you are. And I'm so pleased, pleasantly pleased that we are not your people because you make me sick. Yeah. And there's a lot of that out there right now. In my world view, I would think it would be embarrassing. Yeah. It would be embarrassing. Humiliating. Humiliating. I just, I cannot wrap my head around people. It's like, I get that you have a contrary view to democratic view. I mean, the healthiest political system is when both Democrat and Republican parties are healthy and standing on the opposite sides of issue and negotiating the best way forward. I'm all for that. I'm all for negotiation. That's not what we have right Bipartisanship. Now. No, I know. But what I'm saying is what you're advertising when you support MAGA is that you do not believe in equality. Or democracy. Or democracy. Or the, the Constitution. I mean, all of it. Women's rights. Women's rights. LBGTQI. Minority rights. rights. Minority rights. Voting rights. People's rights. You don't believe you are so ignorant. You know what? These these people sit around in free base Fox News like yeah. a bunch of fucking junkies. Because the first thing they end up saying is, what about the border? Well, I look up where this person lives. They live in Indiana. Right. Which last time I checked the map of the United States of America was quite far from the border. And they sit and watch Fox News who have very much identified the enemy for these Christian nationalists. And it happens to be brown people that are seeking um, asylum in the United States of America. And I would think if you're a Christian, that would be something that you would support. But the facts on the ground are completely different than what these people realize. Number one, first and foremost, President Joseph Robinette Biden has deported more illegal mm -hmm. immigrants than Trump ever did. And those are the facts, but they don't say that on Fox News. Furthermore, Trump killed the bill yeah. that would have been a very conservative bipartisan border bill. So you can't have it both ways. Yeah. You can't say you're worried about the border. And then when there's a solution in front of you to help mitigate issues at the border while still being humane, you believe Trump, who I believe he said, why can't we um, allow migrants from uh, Scandinavia in here? Right. Well, why does he want Scandinavians? Because they're white. Exactly. So all these white women that thought they had a crush on us at one point because we had a Bravo show and you heard the Southern accents and you thought, oh, my God, these are my girls. We're not your girls. 
get pack your shit up, be a moron, announce it on Instagram that you're leaving because every single one of those just makes my heart fill with love. And it expands my heart for more love for the people that you Absolutely. and your hateful political party marginalize have had it. Had it. All right. It's a light, lighthearted intro. Yeah, we just kind of went. Here's the deal. It's an election year, and we're passionate about this, and we want our listeners to feel passionate about this because we live in a red state where our rights have been taken away. Your daughter's rights have been taken away. My son's girlfriend, her rights have been taken away from her. It's not okay. It's not okay to think that my daughter could die if she wanted to have a baby and there were complications. Yeah, but the pro-lifers... They're Which, not pro-life. No. They're pro-birth. They're pro-birth. Then they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. fuck. Otherwise, they do something about guns. They're all hypocrites. All right. Our poor guests that we're about to introduce, they just have no idea what they're walking no, into. No, they don't. All right. Listen up, listener. Patriots and gaytriots. Today, speaking of gaytriots, today's guests, we have Broadway's Andrew Chappelle and fitness icon and New York Times best-selling author, Cody Rigsby, host of the brand new podcast, Tactful Pettiness. Pumps, our ability to suck and then wake up the next day and suck more right. than the previous day is undefeated. It's unparalleled. We are the champions. If you would like to see how bad we suck, <laughs> please join us in Seattle in September or New York City in November for, you know, just some world-class shit talking. That's right. Live. Live, in Live and in person. That's right. Pumps, sweater weather is over and we're in the full-blown sweaty season. And that's why I am breaking out my Bombas. My Bombas socks are extra long staple cotton and they are the key to feeling light on my feet all summer long. What's also great about Bombas is they're wonderful t-shirts. They're so comfortable, make airplane rides super comfy. What I like most about Bombas is that for every comfy item you buy, they donate an equally comfy clothing item to someone who really needs it. That's a really nice way to spend your money knowing how philanthropic and helpful Bombas is. Listener, are you ready to get comfy and give back? Head over to bombas.com slash had it and use the code HADIT for 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash HADIT, and use the code HADIT at checkout. You know what I've had it with? What have you had it with? Talking about what men need to do if they get a four-hour erection. I want to start talking about my four-hour nap after sex, but where's my option? I did some homework, and it turns out there is a pink pill for women. It's called Addy, and a woman got it approved by the FDA. In clinical trials, Addy was shown to boost sex drive in certain premenopausal women bothered by low libido. Hell yes. It's prescription and the only FDA-approved pink pill. I asked my doctor about it, but you can speak to a telehealth provider online at Addy.com. A-D-D-Y-I dot com. Finally, can those be the Super Bowl ads from now on? Addy, or Flobanserin, is for premenopausal women with acquired generalized hypoactive sexual desire disorder, HSDD, who have not had problems with low sexual desire in the past, who have low sexual desire no matter the type of sexual activity, the situation, or the sexual partner. The low sexual desire is troubling to them and is not due to a medical or mental health problem, problems in the relationship, or medicine or other drug use. Addy is not for use in men or to enhance sexual performance. Your risk of severe low blood pressure and fainting is increased if you drink one to two standard alcoholic drinks close in time to your Addy dose. Wait at least two hours after drinking before taking Addy at bedtime. Your risk of severe low blood pressure and fainting is also increased if you take certain prescriptions, over-the-counter or herbal medications, or have liver problems. Low blood pressure and fainting can happen when you take Addy, even if you don't drink alcohol or take other medicines. Do not take if you are allergic to any of the ingredients in Addy. Allergic reactions may include hives, itching, or trouble breathing. Sleepiness, sometimes serious, can occur. Common side effects include dizziness, nausea, tiredness, difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, and dry mouth. See full PI and medication guide, including boxed warning, at addy.com PI. Or call 844-PINK-PILL. Addy. A-D-D-Y-I dot com. All right, let's welcome back to I've Had It, Cody Rigsby, who has partnered with Andrew Chappelle. They are the hosts of a brand new podcast called Tactful 
pettiness. Hello, guys. How are you? Hello. Hello. Hey, girlies. I feel like it's just, you know, us four simple gals, Vindal and I, having a nice little sit and chat. Mm -hmm. That's right. When I was thinking about this morning, Cody, you being on, I was like, I remember how great his body is. Oh, I mean, goodness. I'm objectifying Please, you. I know more. that's bad, but I was just thinking he might be the guest we've ever had with the best bod. Okay, listen. Well, thank Are you me? so much. And listen, I advocate for objectifying <laughs> men because <laughs> it's not done enough. So please do it more. Our listener will understand that it's been, I think it's, Kylie, is it 2,475 days since pumps has been laid? I thought it was like 7,000 something. And so, you know, there's a constant anytime penis comes up or somebody's penis. talking about Cox Cable, she immediately starts thinking about Cox. <laughs> the minute <laughs> your name came up on the guest list, she's like hot body. Hot body. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, I um, also thought the same thing because, well, I'm always thinking about Cox, but... Um, <laughs> We just went to go see Inside Out 2 this weekend, and all I could think about is how hot the dad is in oh, that movie. We love the dad. And I just know something tells me that it's just very weighted. You know, it just it just fits in your hand with a lot of support. <laughs> Pendulous balls. <laughs> big balls. Very yeah. big balls. Mm -hmm. There's something, there's something that his nose tells a story. Cause you know, there Absolutely. is the thing is called dick nose. Mm -hmm. If the nose is big, usually the um the private parts follow suit. Yes. Really? I have never heard that. Yeah. I've heard big hands, big feet. I hadn't heard the big See, nose. I've, I've, I've sat been with some guys with big hands that don't have uh, large penises. <laughs> so do you prefer, I mean, do you prefer it on the big, the small? Uh, you know, it, here's the beauty of being a gay man that is versatile. Mm. You know, like if... If the guy's not working with, well, then just be a great bottom babe. We can figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out either way. There's a lot of different options. Yeah. For me, it's not so much about the size. It's more about the aesthetic. Is Ooh. It doesn't please me to gaze upon it. Yeah. Really? Because if, if it pleases me to gaze upon it, it will also please me to do other things to it. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. See, I haven't yeah. given a blowjob in like over 20 years. So it's hard for me to even <laughs> picture a penis. Like in the face type thing. Oh Look my at gosh. their faces. You gotta get a dick in your face. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on oh. over in Oklahoma City? Oh my God. Actually, when I was in Oklahoma City, I had sex with a really hot guy. Really? What's oh his name? Oh my gosh. I don't know what his name was. Is he bisexual I actually, by I chance? I think he might have been like in the closet. Ooh. He, so we had sex on his lunch break, actually. And <laughs> efficient. He was a stallion. Where? Wonderful. Where? At a hotel? Where was the venue? Yeah, he came. He came to my hotel. Was he on Grinder? He was on Grinder. He mm -hmm. was he was working in the building above. I was working out. And I could sense sometimes on Grinder, you can sense that there there's an urgency mm. to them. <laughs> and I was like, I feel like this guy wants to meet up like now. Wow. And so by the time I finished working out, he was waiting for me in front of my hotel. We do, we go upstairs. We he said, "Oh, I just want to do blowjob, and then um, if it goes well, then I can come back and we can do more." And it went well, and we did it all there in one sitting. Okay, <laughs> so it was an audition with a blowjob first. Mm -hmm. He auditioned mm -hmm. you. See, maybe you could do this, Pam. You could audition. No. Yeah. I'm just and we went straight at... to the callback right then and there. Yeah, I I'm just so jealous of gay men. There's mm. no emotional. We don't have to go out to dinner and make no. small talk. We can just go have sex at lunch. Pumps, you can do have around this. the world. I don't. You can have this. You, you can have this. You can it's have this. It's within your control. Yeah. But you know, different strokes, different folks. I would. I would love to do that. Now, that's a hookup I would be into. We're just a we're lunchtime, efficient. Go in, get you. out. Okay. What have you guys had it with? Oh. Let me pull up my list. Yeah, pull up that list. He's, we've got a lot of things that we've had it with. I have to say, few things please me than making a list. And something that really pleases me even more is a list that I can rant about. Yeah. I, we love to complain. You know, like there doesn't need to be a manager, but I do want to complain. I just want to complain for no reason. <laughs> First thing on the list, and this is something that happened to me just the other week. People who are constantly on their phones, but cannot text back or Ven reply to your Venmo request. Waiting for the money, babe. Baby, you owe me money. That's okay. bullshit. That's and so I true. see your ass in your phone. Yeah. What are you doing? Get on it. 
I here's what I want to get to with this point because I think it's a really good point. If you text somebody and you really need a response to something and they're not responding to you, but then you get on Instagram and it shows a post that was posted like Ma'am. two minutes ago, and that person has liked it and commented on it, yet your text message that's 15 minutes old is sitting there all by itself unattended to. And that just is, it enrages me that somebody would prioritize yes. their Instagram life over responding to a very important text. I need to know what you want from Taco Bell. Yes. Can you please respond? To that I say, call the police and send it to prison. Yes, immediately. It's enough. <laughs> it's unacceptable. And I will not, I will not be ignored. <laughs> Okay, the next thing you've had it with, I believe, is regarding people getting married. Go off on that. Baby, <laughs> do you really expect me to get excited about your third or fourth marriage <laughs> to this part to another person? And we're bring and I'm ha uh, spending money on a gift and maybe going to a location wedding. Baby, I already went to Bora Bora the first time <laughs> <laughs> when you said he was the one, and that lasted nine months. I want my refund, actually. I'm sending you a Venmo request, and I need you to reply to it immediately. Yeah, you need to start getting married in backyards. <laughs> That's Please. Such... Local only. For me, it's the lack of uh, self-awareness that if you've tried and failed at something three times, that you would continue right. to invite the exact same people to the fourth <laughs> attempt. <laughs> Not you know, all. that's like if I'm really if I really fucking suck at doing a a, a flip off a high dive, I'm not, <laughs> and I always belly flop. I'm not going to keep inviting people to come watch me do this belly flop. But the lack of self awareness with the invitation list is really astounding. Yeah, it really mm -hmm. is. Yes, um, my my big I've had it that I'm very passionate about because I take the subway every day to work and then I go to Moynihan station and there's multiple escalators. And most of the time I'm in a rush or trying to get there on time and people here in New York city, and it might be, it might be the visitors. There's two lanes in the escalator, babe. There's the right side and there's the left side. The right side is for the slow people that don't want to walk and move fastly. The left is the fast lane. Why do you hose? Have you in the right lane and your bag in the left lane and you're impeding me from getting to work on time? I've literally had it. Put the bag in front of you and keep it pumping. I've had it. What I really, this speaks to a larger issue. Huh. The rules of the road also apply to sidewalks and escalators. Okay. We drive on the right side of the road. Okay. Move it. Baby, you need to move around. Also, like, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Wake up. Attention. If you get on an escalator and you see a line of people standing on the right side and it's clear on the left, why are you putting your potato butt on the left side, honey? We're trying to get someplace. <laughs> I'm trying to get to Dwayne Reed to buy a $7 water. Thank you. Okay. You know, this, I need is, you to move. this is epidemic. It is. In America. Epidemic. But if you go over to London, that shit is so tight. Every single step on the escalator says... Keep right, stand mm -hmm. left, and they all honor it, and they are all like sucked over to the right side so that people can pass. But in America, it's just fucking free for all on every step. You're dodging through rollaways, baby seats, all this backpacks, all this shit. It's fucking trench warfare on an escalator in the United States. I've had it. Yeah, and I I went to Japan this May this May, and they are they are play by the rules. If they were to do this, it would dishonor their entire family. <laughs> we need more of that here. We do. Mm -hmm. There's a lot we of do. things. I just, we I do. just need spatial awareness and like a, a civil society. Please. You know what I mean? Like everybody, please look where you're going. Yeah. Just, I mean, spatial awareness. How about just self-awareness? I am not invisible. I am not the only person on the sidewalk. I am not the only person on the escalator, but you can't find it a lot. You just don't see because it. Because also a lot of people, you know, everyone's on their phones. We're all guilty of looking at the phone. However, what is within your control is stepping to the side. If you need to look at Google Maps and you don't know where you are, step out of the way. Get step out, out of the, the side. Go over there. Go over this way. Okay? <laughs> because if you, just in case you didn't notice, people are walking through here. Okay? This is an active walkway. And I'm no fire marshal, but I will tell <laughs> someone to move out of the way.
And then think about it. If you're driving a car and you're lost and you you don't know what's going on and you have to look at a map or take a minute, you're going to pull off to the side of the road. So let's just equate it. Oh, my God. Wait. Remember when we went to, what? We went to see Assassins? We uh-huh. to, okay. So we go to a drag show. I call. I make us a reservation. And they're actually very organized at this place in Fire Island where if you have a reservation, they make sure that everyone on the reservation has a view of the stage. Mm. So then these late ass people they didn't have a reservation come in and they see all this open space in front of our table and they start standing in, in our way. And so I, without hesitation, I went up to every single one. I said, oh, ooh, baby, I'm just going to move you over here real quick. <laughs> and I would always start it with the ooh. I'd be like, ooh, baby, ooh, yep, going to move you right over here. I moved one man, I counted seven times. <laughs> And honestly, it was for his safety because he could have gotten attacked by a drag queen's wig, a yeah. blam, a, right. a dollars flying into the sky. He could have really lost an eye right. out in there. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. God, Andrew, I love that because I, I, I'm not scared to do that kind of shit either. I like that. Mm-hmm. Before. Mm-hmm. Because it's almost like, oh, they must be lost or confused. You know, it's like you're helping them. Like, oh, sweetie, where's your mom? You right. know, kind oh, of a babe, southern oh, this bless is a your heart. Off area. Why did you come on this side of the scansion? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about the rules, the unspoken rule about getting on of a su- onto a subway or getting onto an escalator? <laughs> the unspoken rules that the smart mm. people follow and the selfish dumb fucks don't follow. Let's dive into that. It is quite very simple. If you're getting on the subway, stand to the side and let the people get off of the subway so that there is now space to get on the train for you. Correct. There's no space for your ass on there when everybody's still on there. And these greedy hoes that uh, (laughs) run on quickly because they can grab a seat. Like, damn, bitch. First come, first serve. (laughs) Yeah, I just don't I just don't like the. The elbow culture of no, it all. No, you know what no, I mean? No, like, no. just chill. Just wait. Like, unless you're, like, quite literally disabled or with child. I'll happily actually give up my seat. Yeah. Right. You, you walk down here into this into this horrible rat-infested basement <laughs> transportation area. I think you can stand for the five minutes to get to 72nd Street. <laughs> what about the elevator? When you're waiting for an elevator and it, the doors open... And the person next to you steamrolls into the elevator before the people get off. I think it's the rudest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Stand Extremely. to the side. Stand to the side. Stand to the side. I, like when I walk, I have my, my dog and, you know, I have to walk the dog, you know, constantly so she doesn't shit in my house. <laughs> and um, whenever we are in the lobby waiting to go back up to the apartment and I know what elevator because it goes ding. I go to the elevator and I stand to the side. I don't stand in the front of the crease of the doors because chances are there's going to be some homeowners that are coming out trying to hit the streets. Right. And and I will also take the dog part uh, just a little further. Oh, boy. If your dog is in a public vicinity, get your dog. Get your dog. Why, get your animal. Why, is your, why is your dog on that pulley leash? Why Why is your dog 10 feet away from you <laughs> in a coffee shop? Get your dog. Please get your dog. I, I don't want to pet your dog. I don't think your dog is cute. I don't I don't want to get to know your dog. I don't want to know where you bought him. I don't know. I don't want to know what breed it is. Just take care of your dog. Get, get it next to you, please. Yes. Unless we made like a pre-existing reservation to have a dog date. I'm, I'm not chopping at the bit to meet the animal. <laughs> Okay, is it true, or have I just seen this on uh, Instagram, that you can only take your dog on the subway in New York if it's in a bag? Okay, so they've actually relaxed on this oh, quite yeah. a bit. This you would used, know. Yeah, this used to be a rule that they actively enforced. Mm. And uh, since I, I moved back to New York uh, last year, and I noticed a lot of dogs just like out, you know, raw dogging it on the subway without a bag. <laughs> And I think now how they're just getting away with it is everyone's just saying it's a service animal because, you know, like they, you can't really the girl, challenge that. The girls really go heavy on a service animal that's not a service animal. Every, <laughs> I don't know what the, the I don't know how you get that officially signed off, but people are really overdoing well, that. Well, I feel like it's been a Ronald Reagan thing where, like, you know, he made it so, you know, the, the people cannot ask you. It's, you know, it's. Because imagine oh. if you really did need the dog and you had a disability, you wouldn't well, want to be like, of well, course. I've got this of thing course. that's wrong of with course. me. Like they've figured out a way to do it. Um, I will say this as a dog owner who do- also rides the subway. 
I don't want my dog on the nasty subway floor. Yeah. I don't want my dog with the crack needles <laughs> and a fucking uh, heroin spoon. Okay. <laughs> I want my dog in the bag so that when she arrives at her destination, she's fresh and ready to be greeted Lean. by her public. <laughs> Does she ride in the bag on the subway? Oh, she loves she loves being in her bag. It's it's her little home away from home. She gets in on her own volition, all four legs. She 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 has a whole thing that she does when she gets in there. Pumps, I'm thinking we should start an I've had it pickleball tennis line merch. What say you? I love that idea because I do love a little skirt. But thank goodness when we talk about doing that, we have discovered Shopify. Listener, Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, which is 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash had it all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash had it now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash had it. Listener, if you've heard of Ozempic or Wegovy, you've probably heard three things. They're effective, but they're expensive and they're hard to get. And that's where Roe comes in. I absolutely attribute Roe to what a wonderful success I've had in losing weight. It's simple, it's convenient, and the expense that everyone complains about goes down immensely with Roe. Through Row, you can access prescription compound GLP-1s with the same weight loss ingredients as brand name GLP-1s at a fraction of the cost. Row has compounded GLP-1s in stock now, and you can get it in one to four days if you qualify. Row members have support throughout the process. If eligible for medication, patients have access to their provider on demand for any questions. Listener, go to row.com slash had it. Memberships start at just $99 for your first month. Medication costs are separate. That's ro.co slash had it. Go to ro.co slash safety for black box warning and full safety information. Compounded medication is not required to and does not receive FDA review or approval prescription only. Homes.com knows that when it comes to home shopping, it's never just about the house or condo. It's about the home. And what makes a home is more than just the house or property. It's the location and neighborhood. If you have kids, it's also schools, nearby parks, and transportation options. That's why Homes.com goes above and beyond to bring home shoppers the in-depth information they need to find the right home. And when I say in-depth, I'm talking deep. Each listing features comprehensive information about the neighborhood, complete with a video guide. They also have details about schools with test scores, state rankings, and student-to-teacher ratio. They even have an agent directory with the sales history of each agent. So when it comes to finding a home, not just a house, this is everything you need to know. All in one place, homes.com. We've done your homework. Okay, we want to play a game with you guys called Had It or Hit It. Let's, love it. Let's hit Let's it. Hit it. <laughs> oh my God. Welcome to Had It or Hit It. I would hit it. Had it. Had it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. Okay. Had it or hit it, people who are getting a cold all the time. <laughs> Had it. Had it. <laughs> Stay home. Go to sleep. Drink your uh, drink your waters. Have your vitamins. Stop going out. Stop staying out late. Eat something healthy. Blow your nose. Th this common cold is a little too common in your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a bitch that's always losing their wallet. Ooh. 
me. <laughs> really? I am always, I, I literally ask where my wallet is about three times a but week. But no, you know where it is. You have been like lost at lost. I have an idea, but like it might take me a while to I find think, it. Oh. I think what Andrew's talking <laughs> about, because I had this friend probably about 10 years ago and would all go to lunch. And everybody would say, we'll just divide it equally at the end. And everybody's had mimosas. Everybody's ordered shit. And it never failed. Every single time. And we're talking more than 10 times. Oh, every wow. single time she'd open the wallet and go, oh, my God, I forgot my credit card. No. Oh, my God, I left my credit card at the yep. dry cleaners. It was a consistent pattern of making other people pay for her uninvited yes. Venmo request. Yeah. yeah. This was pre Venmo. In the modern then. world. Yeah. Yeah. No, it got to where nobody wanted to get a lunch with her. Duh. Un uninvited. Nobody wanted to go. Please don't come. No. Because as I famously said, we're running up the bill and we're having a good time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Had it or hit it, the Olympics. Uh, hit it. Hit it. Hit it. And hit and hit a lot of them. But hit they are they are <laughs> Hit them, hit on them, hit all around them. <laughs> hit it, the entire team, the men's mm -hmm. gymnastics team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got and their also bodies. the Ukrainian gymnastics team. Oh, I didn't see them. And also Great Britain gymnastics. <laughs> I didn't see them. Yes, baby. Oh, wow. What about the swimmers, Andrew? Oh, yeah. I got to give it a like, Very hot. Actually, I was at dinner with my mom and we were kind of like at a sports bar kind of place and they had the Olympics on and she said, I really... There was like some Italian man with like white hair, and she was like, "She, he's so hot." And I was like, "Yeah, you're right, mom. He, <laughs> he is very hot." They actually something that they don't actually tell um, the people of the world is that you actually have to be hot to qualify for the Olympics. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah I so noticed that. I noticed on Instagram this morning this guy's going viral, and he's a French diver, like mm. high dive. And I'm telling you, the package in his little panties <laughs> is quite <laughs> impressive. So when we get well, okay. off, when we get off our uh, podcast episode here, why don't you do a little Goog French? I, I will do. My, I will definitely do my homework on that one. And we will. And actually, I have a girlfriend who hasn't sucked a dick in 20 years. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if, if he's got a good package. Maybe she can uh, hop on a mm -hmm. flight over there. Delta is a sponsor. DHL Olympics. DHL package waiting for you. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Had it or hit it? Loud chewers. Had it. Had it. What is wrong with you? You were made wrong. I shouldn't be able to hear the food <laughs> crunching in your mouth with your mouth closed. I blame the parents. I blame the parents yeah. because this is coming from the childhood. If you're not telling your kids when they're out at a restaurant or at the dinner table in your home, honey, you're chewing loud and it's uh, obnoxious, gross, and disgusting. Can you please shut your fucking mouth while you're chewing? Oh my God. Especially if the room is quiet or you're like eating next to a coworker. And I, I, there have been people like they they are actually chewing with their mouth closed, and I can still that, hear that noise. <laughs> you're chomping. If you have any loud chewer friends, you need to speak up. Here's it's what... as if they it's as if their their uh, fly was unzipped or there right. was something Great. on their face. I agree. They had a booger. Stop letting it just sit there. That's right. Say something. If you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. what, what we want to do is we think it would be, just be helpful to have people like the four of us that wear a little referee jersey out in public <laughs> they have a little whistle and a clipboard yep. and a little siren okay so like for example you could be positioned in the subway and you see mm. somebody trying to be lying on before other people get off you mm -hmm. sound your siren blow your whistle and immediately write them a social citation yeah immediately yeah, mm -hmm. this these can also segue over to fashion citations just while you're at it if you're feeling doubly ambitious if you see somebody whose outfit is a complete catastrophe just go ahead and handle that as well and the same thing goes for a loud chewer like you're at a restaurant maybe the four of us are at dinner and we notice we hear somebody four tables over put your ref shirt on get your whistle out blow it and just immediately write a ticket i think what you have just described is the pitch for our reality show that we're going to do together <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be really fun it really would that'd be, be that'd be hilarious <laughs> okay had it or hit it fire island oh Hit it. Hit it. We and we have been hitting, we have been it, hitting it a okay. little bit too how much. Many as times, you can tell. How many times have each of you been laid at Fire Island? How many tricks at Fire Island per person? Maybe I I, I literally could not tell no. you the number. Yeah. I, the, it, the limit does not exist. The limit doesn't <laughs> I, I, 
I lost count from the, the first five hours I got off the ferry and was there on a Friday night. So who knows, babe? I love that. Okay. Um, last one. Had it or hit it, Kamala Harris? Oh, hit it, hit baby. It. Hit it. I just fell out of a coconut tree. <laughs> My mom is very, very excited about the Kamala Harris come up. campaign and come up. How I have exciting to, say been... to have a presidential candidate that was just on RuPaul's Drag Race, yeah. doesn't mm -hmm. shy away from being an ally, that mm -hmm. advocates Start for the women. marriages immediately, as she said. <laughs> I know, I love that clip. 12 or whatever it was. Yeah, I think it's just exactly what we needed. I felt like... You know, it was time for Biden to pass the torch, and I feel like we needed new excitement in our party because our ideas are correct. Standing with the LGBTQ community is of utmost importance because what y'all are wanting is not more. You want the same. You want equal. Absolutely. Equality. And to be able to articulate that, and I love – I think it's just – I think it's time for a boss bitch to be in charge. I agree. I just, I'm so ready for Absolutely. a female president. Cool. And also for women's rights, it's, you know, it's, yes. it's, there, there are so many issues that need to be addressed. Um, and so I think the thing that was uh, almost emotional for me to see was the influx of excitement about the race when she jumped in, right? All of a sudden I'm getting text messages, there's emails, we're, we're organizing, we're excited about this. And we did not have that before he stepped to the side. Honestly, he ne he needed to step to the side. <laughs> That's so right. Active walkway. Thank you. Okay. That's and exactly so he stepped to the side. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where can our um, what are your Instagram handles personally? Uh oh, here you go. He needs to change this. Andrew needs to change his pod, uh, his Instagram name. It is complicated, and so uh, mine is at Cody Rigsby. My name. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Andrew. My Instagram is at a C H A P P H A W K. And what does that say? A Chap Hawk. Please allow me to explain it to the listeners. A for Andrew, Chap for Chappelle, Hawk, because my Native American name is Hawk Run. And A Chap Hawk has been my name since my AOL Instant Messenger. And that's why it needs name. to change. You, 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 if I were still using my AOL, I would be embarrassed. Okay? I think it's so cute and nostalgic. But here's the thing. I'm willing to change the name, but I tried on Instagram. And Instagram says you have to contact support to change it. Okay, send an email, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Tackle Petty. No. <laughs> Illustration right there. Thank you guys so much. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye, loves. I love gay men. God, I love gay men. I, I just love, love, love. And I know I'm bad at Instagram, but I kind of like his AOL name. A Chap Hawk. I like that it's his Native American name. I'm kind of into it. I want to take uh, my Frenchies and just go to Fire, Fire Island for the summer. That I want to go so have fun. a, you know, people want to go to Italy and have an eat, pray, love summer. I want to go have a gay, gay, gay summer. Oh my gosh. That would be great. We're would... just gay men. I would love it. Yeah. That sounds perfect. Doesn't it? I know. I bet there's some gays that play pickleball out there. Some gay triots. It would be a gay triot summer. Gay triot summer. Yeah. Uh -huh. This time next year, you're going to be an empty nester like me. That's right. You can have all, we can fire island it up. Totally. We'll just get a little, like maybe... Maybe it's when you come out of the closet. Could be. <laughs> because one thing's for sure. If you go to Fire Island for the summer, you're not getting laid by a dick. <laughs> Probably true. Probably true. All right, listener. We are heading to Seattle in September and to New York City in November. So click our link in bio to buy tickets for our tour to see punks, meet Kurt and Mima, America's Greatest Legal Mind in person in Seattle or New York. Pumps tell them. We will see you next Tuesday or Thursday or both.